Engineering in the U.S. has made incredible strides in the past. As late as the mid-1900s, the idea of freeways was still developing, and they weren't yet built on a widespread scale. And now, there is incredible infrastructure being built around the country, including 24-mile-long bridges, covered in an earlier video of mine. But now, over mile-long tunnels going under cities, water, and mountains. So today I wanted to look at the longest road tunnels in the country, and show the history of how insane these really are. Before the video starts though, I wanted to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. We make geography related content like this every single week, so if that's the kind of stuff you enjoy watching, just click the subscribe button below so you don't miss future uploads. Thank you! Tunnels are yet another infrastructural development throughout history that has changed the way we're able to travel and transport goods. Like bridges, they're a good way to build in areas that would otherwise be impassable. Now, when you're deciding whether you should build a bridge or a tunnel, you may think a bridge would be easier, and throughout history that's normally been the answer. But tunnels work better in different situations. For one, they have a lot less environmental impact, making it a more feasible option now in modern times. But also, bridges are just used for different things. Tunnels can go under mountains or under cities, while bridges just don't have that ability. So yeah, when comparing those two, I think it's important to realize the main differences. But with that, let's start to go through the top 10 longest tunnels in the US, starting at number 10, the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. So this tunnel is located in southeastern Virginia, at a total distance of 1.43 miles. You may think I'm referring to the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, which is located in the same metropolitan area and is one of the largest bridges in the country. But what I'm talking about is this connector between the north end of Norfolk and Hampton across the James River at the edge of the Chesapeake Bay. Originally, a two-lane tunnel was built there and opened in 1957, pre-interstate system at a cost of $44 million, with the second portion being introduced with the interstate system and completed later on in 1976 due to a steady increase in traffic. Next up, we have the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel. This tunnel, located to the south of downtown Baltimore on I-895, travels under the Patapsco River at a length of 1.45 miles. It's longer than the Fort McHenry Tunnel located just to the north, and it was completed and opened in 1957, less than a month after the original Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. This one was slightly longer though, and served a larger metropolitan area. I thought it was funny that the first collision in the tunnel occurred 15 minutes after opening, as well as the first flat tire and stalled vehicle in the first day. Next we move up the coast to Boston, where we find the O'Neill Tunnel. This 1.5 mile tunnel is a fun one, because instead of going under a body of water like the first two, it actually never goes underwater. Instead, it was built under downtown Boston during the Big Dig project. This means it's also way newer. Construction began in 1992, with the northbound portion only being opened in 2003, and finally the full tunnel being opened in 2005. Despite not going under any water, the tunnel still had problems with many large leaks because of its proximity to the ocean. Somehow there were 500 different leaks that needed to be repaired in the tunnel. Between this and other repairs in the tunnel, it ended up costing an extra few hundred million just in construction there. Next up, we stay on the Atlantic and move to New York City, where we find the Lincoln Tunnel. This 1.5 mile tunnel is known for being the busiest in the entire world. Though I don't know if that's currently true, it's at least one of the busiest out there carrying some 120,000 vehicles every single day. The tunnel has an extensive history, but basically it was proposed in 1928 and construction began in 1934. The tunnel saw many delays due to funding concerns caused by the fact that it was between two states, as well as the Great Depression. But in 1937, the first tube was opened, and the second being opened later in 1945. The Lincoln Tunnel is still an incredibly important tunnel, especially with its extensive history. Moving on, we'll go right back up to Boston, where we find the Ted Williams Tunnel. This 1.6 mile tunnel was the first part of the Big Dig project to be built and opened, meaning it's slightly older than the O'Neill Tunnel we talked about earlier. It opened in 1995 to authorize commercial traffic, with it being open to all traffic in 2003. Unlike the O'Neill, this tunnel does actually go under the water, leading to the Boston Logan Airport, and was a major bypass to downtown Boston. Next, we will go right back over to New York, where we find the Holland Tunnel, being very similar to the Lincoln Tunnel and serving the same purpose, but farther south. 
The only major difference is that this 1.62 mile tunnel was opened slightly earlier than the Lincoln Tunnel was. There were plans for the tunnel as early as 1906, with construction starting in 1920 and the tunnel being opened in 1927 to connect Jersey City to Lower Manhattan. Next up, we finally move out west, where we find the iconic Eisenhower Tunnel, a 1.69 mile tunnel, which may be the most iconic part of the entire interstate system. This tunnel is especially notable for a few reasons. It's the longest tunnel under a mountain in the interstate system. It's also the highest point in the interstate system and the highest tunnel in the world. But it also just serves as the final needed connector to put an interstate straight through the Rockies of central Colorado. Being completed in 1973, the tunnel changed the way we see interstate travel forever, making just about anything possible with road building. Okay, and after that one, we move right back over to New York City, where we find the longest tunnel in the entire interstate system, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. This 1.73 mile tunnel dates back to 1925 in response to growing traffic congestion in Lower Manhattan. It was originally meant to be located just between the Brooklyn and Manhattan Bridge, but in the end, the much longer route straight out of Lower Manhattan and just past Governor's Island was decided on. So finally, after 25 years of very slow progress, the tunnel was opened in 1950 as the nation's longest underwater vehicular tunnel, the title it still holds to this day. Next up, we move to number two on our list, where we again go out west to Seattle and the beautifully named Alaskan Way Viaduct Replacement Tunnel. What did this tunnel do? Well, I'm glad you asked. It replaced the Alaskan Way Viaduct. Okay, but actually, this two-mile tunnel was completed very recently in 2017 to replace the controversial viaduct stretching across the Seattle waterfront. The tunnel goes right under the city's downtown and is known for being incredibly expensive and going way over budget, ending at $3.29 billion. Now we move to number one on our list. This is a bit of a confusing one. Some people would consider the Alaskan Way Viaduct Replacement Tunnel to be the longest in the country. Because for this one, we have to move all the way up to Alaska, where we find the Anton Anderson Memorial Tunnel. This 2.5 mile tunnel is actually supposed to be a railroad tunnel. Being just one lane wide, it can support traffic either direction, but not at the same time. And because rail and road traffic have to share the tunnel, it's coordinated by two computer-based systems, the tunnel control system and the train signal system. These systems control the timing of vehicles entering the tunnel, spacing them for safety, and lowering railroad gates when a train is approaching. The whole situation is incredibly interesting. The town it's connected to, Whittier, is known for having an entire population living in one large building, which is actually pretty new, with the old building being abandoned and now looking like nightmare fuel. I encourage you to look this up because there's too much to talk about in just one video, and the whole thing is incredible. But yeah, that's the longest tunnels in the country. All of these tunnels serve incredibly important purposes that wouldn't be possible without the impressive engineering ability of the 20th and 21st centuries. So there has to be some appreciation there. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Jeremy Jarvis, Haystack, Uncouver, Boss King Inc., Pol Pot's Pie Hole, Blang, Christopher DeAngelis, JL, Darkbird, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolfling73, Snyder Swine, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryson. I appreciate you all so much, I don't think you really understand how much you help out the channel. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. It's basically just helping me out as a person, all that goes into my savings for the future. So if you appreciate my channel and you want to help just me out, that's the best way to do it. Thank you so much.